We're taking over the boat and your imagination. There are three things that set this cruise apart and what make it so unique. The Mandalay, first of all, she's 90 years old. She is a gorgeous and stately vessel. Um, one of the members of the original Windjammer uh, fleet, but they're under completely new management and new ownership. And the pride is incredible. So what are, what are the things that are making the new Mandalay and this particular cruise so unique and different than any of the other cruises that we've ever experienced? Well, first of all, it's the unique places, the super dedicated, friendly, loving, family-like crew, which we're going to talk about more tonight, and all the fun things that there are for us to do on board and offshore while you're on the Mandalay in the Grenadine Islands, and of course, the old traditions that those of you who have sailed with Windjammer in the past love and look forward to each time you come back. Where are the Grenadines? Well, they're pretty far south in the Caribbean, and they're just above Venezuela. So it's kind of a long trip, and some people have said, wow, it's so far to go. Well, I'm just about to tell you that it is so worth every minute that you fly to get down to this area of the world, which is so pristine, so untouched, so unspoiled. Let's talk about that a little bit. The first thing that you're going to see when you're on your cruise vacation aboard the Mandalay are desolate beaches. You're not going to have to hustle with thousands of cruise passengers. If anybody's on the major cruise lines, you get off in Cozumel or Nassau, for example, and there are just thousands of, of passengers. Sometimes there's five and six ships in port. Here, it's just us. Desolate beaches, no crowds unspoiled, and just when you thought it couldn't get any better because you've just dropped anchor and you spent about two hours in the most idyllic place that you could possibly imagine, the guys come by and they bring us back to tender to the Mandalay. We cruise for a few more minutes, and before you know it, we're at just another more beautiful idyllic location, and each one you want to just stay forever. Every day was a surprise aboard the Mandalay. No matter where we went, whether it was uninhabited or a pristine, private, isolated, uninhabited beach, we always thought that this would be the last place. No, this has got to be it. This has to be the one. Well, some of the islands actually do have inhabitants. And they are very, very unique in terms of what they have to offer and the local people that are there to welcome us. They're friendly. It's almost a little bit like going back to Mayberry RFD um, or Cheers where everybody knows your name. Uh, Beckway, for example, was one of the stops on our tour or on our cruise. And here's a picture of the tree-studded beach. There's a lone hammock there which is very reminiscent of what this trip is just all about. I do hear some background music or sound. If you're on the call tonight, could you just please mute your phone so that we are um, free of that extra noise? I'd appreciate that. Thanks. I think somebody might be cooking their dinner. <laughs> While you're in Beckway, one of the really cool things that you're going to be able to do aboard the Mandalay is scuba dive. Even if you don't have your scuba certif certification, you can do what's called an introduction dive at Dive Beckway. It's um, completely free. It takes about 20 minutes to do a little class. They outfit you, and before you know it, there you are headed off to do your a little trial with a qualified dive master. And then after that, you're able to dive up to 30 feet. And on our cruise, we actually took advantage of this. Um, I'm certified, but I did a little re-up, and we were able to dive in several locations aboard the Mandalay. And they'll set all that up for you once you get on board. So you don't have to do anything in advance. There's no advance bookings for shore excursions or any of that extra homework that we find we sometimes have to do on the large cruises. One of the other really neat features about Beckway is um, the turtles. And on our tour, we went over to the Turtle Sanctuary, 
And you cannot believe the size of the turtles. Well, first of all, you see those little baby ones there. So what the turtle um, king does is he goes around the island, he rescues the turtles, he brings them to his facility, which has been a lifelong passion for him, and he raises them till they're about four years old. This one down at the bottom is a greenback turtle, and then there was this really super, super huge turtle called Busybody, and that's exactly what he was. He was jumping on everybody and just trying to, you know, stick his nose into our business and, and find out what's going on here while we were uh, taking a look at, uh, at the facility. And it was very, very neat because it's right at the edge of the water, and you could just feel um, excited because we knew that down the line in our cruise we were going to be able to do some more cool things with turtles, and I'm going to show you where that happens. Well, here it is. This, when we hit Tobago Keys, at this moment, I just looked at my travel companions and I said, guys, we are the postcard. This is a beach. These are pictures that were taken from my iPhone. Um, Tobago Keys is a little uh, series of islands just a little bit north of, uh, a little bit south of Beckley, actually. And these are literally inhabited. So when they take us off, in the morning, um, and by the way, this is, this is what happens when you um, get to these idyllic locations. The Mandalay crew drops the tender into the water and takes us to these beaches. We're there in two minutes. It's very, very convenient, very close, and so it's almost like, oh, look over there. Let's stop. Let's drop, and before you know it, you're on that beach, and you are the postcard. It's incredible. Nobody's there. No crowds. Mayro, a little sleepy island of only 300 people, might seem, wow, what could they possibly have to offer? But believe me, they're very um, prepared for the guests of the Mandalay. You know, they cater only to the sailing community. So what we get to do when we're on Meru is unique, and everybody on the island knows that we're coming. And here's an area where we are able to um, investigate, explore. We literally walked from one side of the island to another. By the end of the day, when we grabbed our beers, we said, oh, gosh, we really deserve these. We walked from one side of the island to another. So we started in, um, in port there, and we walk up the hill. And these are some of the colorful scenes of the area. And you're, you wouldn't believe that such a small um, island, such a small population would offer so much. Um, in just the one main street, they have five or six different establishments. Our group goes out for the night. We do a little beach party. And then um, we visit one after the other. And you, you can't even imagine what it's like to walk into one of these places with the most beautiful views you know, of, the, of the pristine beaches. Um, we, in this particular trip, we were able to see our, our, our vessel, you know, see the Mandalay, the beautiful Mandalay from the open window. And they're just there waiting for us, and they treat us like royalty. Um, it's really just uh, like, like out of a dream. Here were some other things that the next day we took a hike, and uh, we walked up that hill past all of the, the bars and pubs that we had a good time in the night before. And this is when we walked to the other side of the island um, and took a look at some of the sites. And at the end of the trail, this was the voted the number one and the best beach of the trip. But of course, we said that every day because they just got better and better. Uh, but this particular beach, when we arrived, even though you see all the vendors there, there was nobody on the beach but our group, and there were about eight of us. And um, because we decided to, to uh, walk over to the other side of the island instead of back down, we actually had a private taxi arranged for us, uh, Captain Sly, um, who's very involved with every activity every day, um, made a call and had a taxi waiting for us uh, when we got finished, when we were ready. They were there waiting for us, which is what one of the things that you will love about the Mandalay. There's no schedule. Well, there's a schedule that um, is on the whiteboard every day, easily erased, easy changed, easily changed. And of course, it's based on um, the conditions and what's cool that's going on and based on um, captain's suggestions. 
once he gets his bearings in the morning and, um, and puts the uh, information out to the crew, then they let us know what our next stop is. So it's very exciting, very intriguing, and very relaxing because you don't have to think about what the schedule is going to be. They're ready for you when you're ready to do. Here's another island. Um, this is called Happy Bar. And it's just off of Union Island. So when we dropped out there, a lot of us decided to go over to Happy Island. And all I can say to you is if you go there, you'll be happy. And what stays on the island, what happens on the island stays on the island. We have to keep some mystery for you for when you take the cruise. Grenada, another beautiful, beautiful spot. And, and if you're um, joining us on the Mandalay, whether this cruise or another time in the future, coming in early to Grenada is a super idea. It's got a lot to offer. There's plenty to see. And it's idyllic. Uh, this happens to be the beach along the coast where our hotel is. And again, um, not a lot of activity there. You'll see, I think I have a picture a little bit later. Here's Grenada by night. And this is actually where the Mandalay docks. This was a picture taken the very first night that we boarded, and that was our view. I mean, it's, it's, it's a stunning and, and beautiful place to start. And on the sailing uh, in May, we actually left at midnight and we, we stayed up and uh, waited because the captain wanted everybody to get on board safely. And then he raised the sails with the crew and everybody got to help. We got to participate um, and just be a part of that sailing away from that beautiful port. Please mute your phones if you're on. Thank you. The Alamanda Beach Resort is a very comfortable place. This was a poolside cocktail. Looks uh, very refreshing, and it is. And just beyond that pool is the beach. And that, this is the picture I was referring to where it's really locals. Um, I've been doing single vacations for 18 years, and I hear over and over again from members how they want to meet the locals, integrate, learn. And so this kind of vacation allows you to do that because really it's all locals. There are no tourists. It's tourist free. You guys will be the tourists. Here's just some scenes in Grenada, really cool place called Coconuts that we went to. Um, that's a rum, rum drink, a rum, uh, oh gosh, a rum fizzle, <laughs> rum runner with nutmeg on it. Grenada is known for their spices. It's the Spice Island, and that was a really kind of a neat way to uh, consume. The other thing that makes the Mandalay and makes this vacation is not only the unique places that you will be going to where you are the only tourist. It's the crew, guys. They are so dedicated and so humble and so um, blessed in their hearts to be working on such a prestigious vessel. Um, a lot of the, the guys here were with the original Mandalay. And uh, when uh, Cindy's group purchased her and brought her back. Uh, Captain Sly got together and, and started making phone calls. It was like the Blues Brothers. They, they said, we're putting the band together and we're going back on the road. So he got all the best of the best. And you, know, you, you, can, you can look at these faces here and say, okay, these are just some guys. But by the end of the week, they will be your new brothers and your friends because they are so interested in you as much as you're interested in them, and there's nothing that they want to do to make sure that you have a great time. And it's a small group, so they're able to attend to you. It's, it's phenomenal. It starts from the top. It always does. Leadership is everything. Captain Sly is an amazing guy. Of course, he knows all the technicalities. He's been a sea captain for years. He has a master's degree. He does navigation uh, by the stars. He, he can really maneuver this baby. Um, it's a 400-ton vessel, and he's got it under control. And, um, but in addition to that, and he shares that with us during the course of the cruise, um, he's on deck and around all the time. He's not up in some um, bridge 
where you're not even able to visit. You can stand next to him, do the, the, the things that he's doing, and he talks about it. He's very open and very friendly. And one of the things about um, Captain Sly, though, is if there's a lull in the party, this guy kicks it. One of the nights we were on board, it was a little bit rainy. We had some rain, and um, actually we were supposed to do an offshore activity. So everybody got to shore um, as far as the crew went, and they decided it wasn't going to be ideal for us. So they hustled back. They put everything back together on deck, and Captain Sly came out and just did the most incredible dances and got everybody together on line dances. And we, I know that at one point, I said you had to do some kind of an aerobics class or something on one of the cruise ships because he is the party guy. And that makes a lot of fun. So from Captain Sly at the top being such a phenomenal leader, um, that's him up in the upper left-hand corner doing his, his um, story time. So every morning this is where he addresses everybody from the cruise and gives us an idea of what's headed for the day, and he always ends with a really funny joke. Bernard is his chief mate. And here they are again. They're happy, um, entertaining. They love to share who they are. Bernard gave us a very interesting story about the Caribbean and history from the perspective of a native. Um, not the kind of things you read in the history books for sure, and there was a lot of pride there. And uh, we enjoyed talking to him, but he also enjoys where Captain is the light of the party, Bernard's a little bit more understated, but he's always around helping us and, and giving us um, good tips and information. And um, he's a musician in his own right, uh, plays guitar. So they make a really good team. And, um, and then from these guys down, this is where the rest lies. And they're, they're incredible, uh, an incredible team. Mashup, who will be your most uh, upfront guy, he's our bartender. And he is there 24-7. I don't really know when he slept because he's always there. When you're ready to have a drink, he was there at the bar. And you've heard about the Marines being the first to land when you get to the location. Well, that was mashup. He would forge ahead in the tender, and that's Quincy up there on the top, and they would get to the beach. So by the time we rolled up, when we were ready, when it was time for us to go and have some fun, there was Mashup sitting there, kind of sometimes even under just one palm leaf as shade with his cooler and his complete bar. So for those of you that always have to, you know, that always have to, that want to have some refreshment no matter where you go, um, even in the most isolated beaches, Mashup was there for us. He was a great, he was a real Mashup guy. In the dining room, we had Grandpa, and he was the showman. He was the man of all the specialties. The food that we have is local cuisine, really tasty, varied. Um, I would say it's a four square. Uh, and, and, and Grandpa really delighted in doing things special for us. So whether it was a Caesar salad or at the last night, he did a flambe for us with like 180 proof rum. Uh, bananas foster, super, super delicious. He also was the guy that um, made our animal sculptures out of towels in the rooms. He did all the napkin folding that he shared with us. So again, they're, they're around the, the ship all day, and if there's anything that they're doing that you want to know how to do, you just ask them. They're always there with a smile, and they stop and talk to you. Nobody's ever busy. There he is doing his flambe, and uh, it's really, it's under code, guys, so not to worry. <laughs> Here's Rocky. Rocky's the other dining room server, and there was not a moment that I had to wait for anything uh, during, during my week aboard the Mandalay. <clears throat> I looked up, and there he was. If it was a coffee or to refill my water, he was, he was there. And I actually have a special dining request. Unfortunately, I don't eat shellfish. And so he would come to me, serve the entire you know, table, and then look at me, and in a minute, my dish was there. There was no waiting. He didn't have to go into a huge dining room. It's right there next to the galleys, right there next to the dining room. And the service was just, it was impeccable. So between Grandpa and Rocky, they were terrific. The very first day I woke up, 
I got up late because it's been a long week. Everybody, everybody works super hard just to get on vacation. Then we have to work super hard when we get back. But anyway, I wanted to sleep. So I slept in, and I think we got up at 930 and son of a gun, we went out to the dining room. I didn't think I'd even have breakfast because, you know, like on the big ships, if you don't make it by 930, there's that 930 to 1030 window where there's no food available, which is really tough because that's the time when the, sleep, the people that sleep in need to eat. And uh, there was Rocky waiting. He had set up um, chafing dishes with the omelets for us and had kept out all the fruit and the juices and everything so that we could enjoy breakfast at our leisure. Incredible. One of my favorites, White Squall, super cool dude, super humble, a real sailor. I mean, this guy, this is what he's done his entire life. He was on the original Mandalay and just a beautiful heart. Um, in addition to all his other responsibilities, um, you'll see him later ho hoisting the sails. I mean, I saw him painting. I saw him cleaning. I saw him you know, pulling in, all of the guys help pull in the tenders. Everything is physical. There's nothing automatic there. It's, you'll be amazed at how back to original way of doing life this is, as well on shore as on the Mandalay. There were some really cool things. I'm going to tell you this story while I'm on that subject. We were in um, Mayro, and uh, no, it was Beckway, and all of a sudden we heard a conch shell being blown. We went, whoo. I said, oh, gosh, I wonder what that is. And we were inside this little um, demo shipbuilding place, and the guy said, oh, that's the signal that there's fresh fish in the market. So that's something that blew my mind because, um, you know, we have Groupon to tell us when there's a deal, and these guys had a, a, a conch shell to let them know when the fresh fish was in the market. So Squall was there. He was one of the you know, most hardworking guys that I've ever seen in my life. And in his spare time, he would make uh, rope anklets and bracelets and necklaces. And um, you see the guy down here on the right, he's got like a necklace around his, his um, neck that represents one of the things that they use to actually bring the boat into port. Uh, somebody stands on shore and throws that over, and that helps get it started. So um, I got a chance to see that when we were coming in the final night. So Squall, super cool guy. Um, and uh, also drives the boat. They all take uh, two-hour shifts driving the boat under Captain Sly's guidance. Quincy and Roy, they're your guys. When you're ready to go, they're there waiting for you. They operate the tenders, and I'll tell you, uh, there were days that we actually went to three different places in an hour just to accommodate everybody that was on the boat. So when we get to a location, if you're not ready to go at that moment, it's not a problem. They take 10 or 12 over to the beach, two minutes away. They come back. When you're ready, they take you. I mean, whoever heard of that, right? Sometimes on the bigger ships, you have to go sit in a lounge, wait for your number, go down 16 decks. Don't get me wrong. I like the big cruises, but this was so cool. This was so cool. They're there. It's, I called it tender on demand. And then the guys that you might not meet, although we did because we made an effort to go see who everybody was, but there are a lot of unsung heroes on the crew. Uh, the people that are as, as important as everybody else, but they don't get the face time with you. On the left-hand side, you've got um, our chef who really, I, I did ask him, do you ever leave? And he said to me, yes, when I go back to my cabin. <laughs> he's probably kidding. I hope he's kidding. But anyway, he turned out three meals a day plus snacks. And the coolest thing that I found during the course of the cruise was we were able to go buy fresh fish when we got to Mayro, that, that taxi driver that I told you about who brought us back from the, uh, the most beautiful beach back to the ship. He had a bunch of fish in his cooler, and we said, oh, well, what are you going to do with that? And he said, well, we'll sell it, and some of it I'll eat. And so we said, would, would it be okay if we buy some? So we bought $20 worth of fish, brought it back, and the chef cut it up and made ceviche for us. We asked him, could you make ceviche? And he did it. He did it of their style. It was so delicious, and that was just one of the snacks that we had at our snack time. That's the breakfast area. And um, on the right – is a picture of uh, 
I think it's, it's Joseph, and they're down in the engine room. So this, this is an area that you probably wouldn't ever get a chance to visit on a major ship unless you got special permission um, with the engineer because it's very highly secure. And everything aboard the Mandalay, safety is first. Uh, Captain Sly would be the first to talk about that, and he will talk about that when you meet him. But down in the engine room, we were allowed to go, and they taught us what each of the areas represented, how it worked. They took our questions. There was no rush. They didn't care if we were there for an hour or two hours. But of course, we didn't stay for long because it's 90 degrees average heat down there. So you know, hats off to these guys who keep the engine going. They're down there for um, four-hour tours at a time. And uh, when they're not down there, they're, they're probably doing something else to help maintain the Mandalay. So our hats off to them, and, uh, and, and you may meet some of them when you're on your cruise. The third thing that makes the Mandalay and the Grenadine Island cruise so unique, in addition to the super locations, uh, the incredible crew, it's all the really interesting and novel things that you're going to learn and the fun activities that you're going to do. I'm, and I looked at these pictures after I finished the webinar today and I couldn't believe really how many, how many things we did in a week. It was um, quite something. Well, sailing lessons. Of course, you're on a sailing vessel. So whether you're a novice or you're experienced, Captain Sly can handle you. So this, of course, was the novice lesson. We learned about all, about all the sails and the mast names. And it was really a lot of fun to get your bearings on a vessel that you may never have had a chance to do. And oh, here's, here's a kind of an interesting side note. This, um, the Mandalay was originally given to um, uh, Lee Merriweather Post by her husband, E.F. Hutton. And she had the Mandalay for a couple of years. And then after she was on the Mandalay, she said, oh, honey, this ship is very, very nice. I love it. I love everything about it. I want the same ship, just a little bit bigger. And if any of you out there who are cruisers, you know the Sea Cloud was her new gift. So the Sea Cloud is one of those luxury vessels that is exactly like the Mandalay, but it costs probably ten dollars or $15,000 to cruise aboard the, the Sea Cloud. So you can have the identical experience here with us with Captain Sly, learn all about how to sail, and, um, and do that for just like a fraction of that. Same experience. The whole concept is the sailing. So you're going to learn how to do it. You'll participate if you like. If you want to hoist the sails, they're more than happy. Nobody makes a rule. There's no way to do it. You just jump in. You help. And to be honest with you, I was excited about it for about one day. <laughs> and after that, I didn't bother raising the sails anymore. I just watched them in awe because without our help, they were much more efficient. But, but they're very, very happy to involve us and, and let us take part. You can steer the ship. There is Bernard, the chief mate, up there with Sergio, and he drove for about an hour. And they will let you drive for an hour, two hours. If, this, if you've had a hunkering to steer a sailing vessel, I and mean, this is 400 tons, 239 feet, you go for it. Nobody's going to stop you. It's very casual. No rules. Just do it. The feeling is incredible. No motor, just the sails, just the wind in your hair, and you're in charge. Crab races. Well, when I first heard about this, I'm like, ah, crab races. What could that be like? Horses are cool. Race cars are cool. The showmanship of the crew is what makes it. They present the crabs, each and every one of them. They have a name, and it's comical. They do a test run, so everybody thinks they know which one they're going to win. And then we bet. The guys do literal statistical calculations to calculate the betting payoff. And then the races begin. And it is just a lot of fun. And there you can see one of the winners, Tiffany, there with her loot after she picked the, um, the right crab. And there's a lot of excitement going on around this. So we, we spent about an hour up there, and it was very fiercely competitive. 
and everybody was trying to get the other guy's crabs to go the other way, and uh, it's amazing what we'll do in the name of money. But a great activity aboard the ship one afternoon when we came back from all of our beach frolic. Then there's the treasure hunt. Well, over there on the left was my fierce component, Stacy. In the morning during story time, Captain Sly said, all right, guys, we're going to do a treasure hunt this afternoon, and we need two team leaders. So the shy, more Stacy, and the very laid back and uninhibited Tammy decided to be the, the team leaders. Um, and we spent the afternoon having a great time. There was no pressure. We didn't have to do any work. We agreed on it up front. Let's go have fun, and whatever happens, happens. Came back on board. And we just had a wild time. We each had to go. It was really much like a, um, a treasure hunt, like a, a scavenger hunt. So we had to go find things on the, on the ship. The crew got to be on the team. So whoever got the crew members first got to keep them for their team. And um, just a lot of laughs, a lot of fun. And instead of actually going to run to get the item, you had to wiggle. So a lot of good, old-fashioned, good-natured, fun, and it, the creativity of people really starts to spout because they're out at sea. They don't have phones. They don't have computers. There's nobody judging them. There's no time constraints. There's no clocks. And it's just pure fun. We were like kids. Masquerade night, a blast. You don't even have to bring anything. You may, but everything there, they have a big booty bag with all kinds of things to choose from, and you just get creative. So that's what we did. We had all kinds of different ideas of what it would be like to um, show your stuff and set your stuff at the masquerade party. Of course, there was a judging, and there was a winner, and um, all, all in good fun. And then we danced the night away, which was pretty much – the, the way that we ended every single night. And the guys played music, and the bar was open, and fun, fun, fun. There's beach parties. This is a hallmark for uh, Mandalay, uh, and it's just very quaint and very catered to, to our group. We're the only ones on the beach. This happened to be in Tobago Key. Nobody was there but us, our own private picnic, and there weren't um, a 1,000 of us. There were 40 of us. Wine and cheese party. This is kind of neat. We went out in the morning during uh, story time. Captain said, while you're out today, we were in one of the islands that had some nice wine stores. Just grab a, a bottle of wine, bring it back. Everybody did. And then we enjoyed wine and cheese in the late afternoon while we watched the sunset. So how does it sound so far, guys? Lots of fun things. And if you don't want to participate, you don't have to. You could be napping. You could be reading a book up on the upper deck or just, um, you know, whatever, whatever you please, meeting new people. It was very conducive for making new friends and, and, um, and just camaraderie came easily because it was such a small, intimate group. One of my favorite things was freestyle. On the left-hand side you see – somebody diving off into the water. Well, let me tell you about one of the first days we started off. It was actually a rainy, drizzly, but in a Caribbean tropical kind of a way. So it's not going to ruin your day. You can snorkel, you can dive, you can kayak, you can do all kinds of things in the rain. So what you might have thought, like on a big ship, oh, it's raining, what are we going to do? They cancel the tours. We jumped in the water. All the blue mats the crew brings out for us. They even have a little boat with beer and ice so that you can drink your cocktails out on the water. And we end up spending hours just jumping off the boat, diving in, swimming, having a good time, uh, kayaking, and just floating and enjoying life. And freestyle is really what it's all about aboard the Mandalay. So before I go, I want to just tell you, one day I was up on deck about halfway through and Squall, White Squall, was, was driving. So I thought, oh, this will be a good opportunity to find out a little bit about him. And I asked about his life and what it was like to be working on the Mandalay and did he like it. And then I said, Squall, what, if, what would you say to somebody who's never done a Windjammer cruise? What would you say to them to kind of entice them to come and he said, if you like fun, of course he had the accent, I can't do it, but he said, if you like fun, this is the place to be. No hassle, no busyness, 
no special timing, just be here and be free. So that's what we have to offer. We are almost full. There are five cabins left. It was a very successful endeavor. And um, Cindy Greenberg from Sail Windjammer, Wendy, Tiffany, the crew, we're all excited to have you on board. We have even more special things. It's a vacation of surprises. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a taste and not give it all away because there's nothing better than a surprise. So I'm going to be um, opening up to Q&A for a couple minutes here, see if there's anybody that has some questions, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, what is the source of the drinking water and ice cubes aboard the ship? Okay, it's all um, bottled water. There is a, that's a great question, Tom. There's a, a uh, water tank, how do I want to call it, like a water dispenser, like in the office where you have in your typical office, right in the breakfast in the dining room. So what I did was I had my empty bottles, and I just filled up my bottles every day. They have bottles of water if you'd like to do that. Sometimes I'm a little bit frugal, so I, I did it that way. And that's what they use. It's bottled water for, uh, for, for consumption, for human consumption on board. Um, Jane asks, how rough did the seas get? I'm just getting over a whiplash, and I'm worried about that. Gosh, Jane, maybe we could talk a little bit privately after the webinar, but um, because I would want to know specifically what your ail, what your what your ailing from, because I've had that too, and it can be rough. But we did not have rough seas. It was May, and um, it was not rough. I have a tendency for seasickness. I never got sick the entire week. It's a different feeling when you're sailing and the masts are up. It's very gentle, yet it is moving. So you feel it, but I, I, I would say, of course, I wasn't thinking about it from your sensitivity level, but if you're sitting down, I, I wouldn't encourage you to walk around while the ship is moving, but it was very calm. Um, anybody who doesn't have anything that they're suffering from, you, of course, you can walk around. You can do everything while the ship is going. It's very gentle. But, Jane, we'll, we could talk about yours separately. If you'd like, you could call me uh, tomorrow at 877-765-6874, extension 703. Let's see if we have any other questions. I do see... Snorkeling, any scuba diving opportunities from William? Absolutely, yes, and we covered that from the very first port, and they changed from week to week, so we don't know for sure, but we went to Backway first, and we did a little introduction to scuba course. It was absolutely free, and then I was able to do a 30-foot dive after that. That's for the uncertified scuba diver. If you're a scuba, if you're a scuba diver already, bring your card, bring your logbook in case you want to get signed off, but you can just sign up and show the card, and you're good to go. And we, there were three opportunities for scuba the week I traveled. Um, from Kathy, how much cash do you recommend, and is U.S. accepted? Oh, great question. U.S., no problem. U.S. dollars everywhere. The currency of the islands is called the EC, Eastern Caribbean, but they all take dollars, and it's about two and a half to one. And so you don't have to really change. You could if you want to be a little bit more precise, but I just kind of doubled it and went from there, and nothing was very expensive, so that didn't make a big deal. But yes, U.S. dollars, you, again, no hassle. You show up as you are and do as you're used to doing. So we're very, very amenable to that. Um, the other question is what kind of weather can we expect in July? Yes, it's tropical. It's below the hurricane belt. It will probably rain during the course of the week in July. It wouldn't be um, torrential or like um, monsoon or anything like that. It would just be tropical rain. So it's very light. It could last for an hour and then pass. Expect a little rain. It's so warm there, Kathy, that even if it's raining, you're never cold. And just to jump in the water, this is kind of an aside, but I, I never jumped in any of the bodies of water during the course of the cruise once where I went, you know, ooh, gosh, or I have to put my toe in first and take my time. It was body temperature every single time. 
So I don't know if you're asking, do you need special rain gear? No, forget about it because you dry so fast. Even if you're on the beach, you go in the water, you're dry in about 10 minutes. So I don't think you need any extra equipment. Just go with it. Tom, jellyfish problems, not during the course of our week that we were there. I did not encounter jellyfish at all. Uh, so I, I, I can just say that during the month of May, I didn't see jellyfish. It could be worth some more investigation if you want to see that time of the year because it is sea life and they have cycles just like uh, we do. But uh, while I was there, there were no jellyfish problems, no um, no encounters with any dangerous fish. And I, I forgot to tell you guys that we swam with turtles in Tobago Key. Not just one turtle or two turtles. I was scuba, I'm snorkeling around, and before I knew it, I looked up, and there were, there were seven turtles around me. And they're, they're vegetarian, so I wasn't worried. <laughs> um, let's see. William asks, can we give some basis for tipping the crew? I can give you an exact. It's, the recommended amount is 125 for the week, and they'll charge it to your bill at the end. Let's see, Kathy, what do you have about what to bring on the trip and what to leave them home? Okay, Kathy, I totally thought about this while I was on the cruise. Just bring the basics. I, a little bit overpacked, I had a different dress for every night. I actually brought some jewelry, and my jewelry ended up on my tall animal because nobody was dressed up. And not that I was conscientious about it, but I just didn't need it. I was doing things. I was busy. Then we came back. A lot of people wore tropical clothes, flip-flops, T-shirts, and shorts. So, Kath, I know you've done the Queen Mary. Erase everything. Just leave it at home. Even I brought makeup. I never wore it. Never wore it. Never did anything to my hair. Just a ponytail, sunscreen, bathing suit, flip-flops, T-shirts, and shorts. That's it. That's what you need. Tom asked a store, uh, question about cabin security, like a locker or a safe. Well, if you don't bring anything that needs to be secure, then you don't need a locker or a safe. So that kind of follows perfectly with Kathy's question about what to bring. There are no locks on the doors, and everything is open. I left, the, you'll, when you get up in the morning, you'll see people's items on the deck that they left at the bar, they left on a chair, um, flip-flops. There were a pair of flip-flops there for three days. I'm like, doesn't somebody know who these flip-flops belong to? In my experience, it's absolutely above board. I mean, the crew values their job so much. Uh, I can only just scrape the surface by telling you about them on this trip. And then, of course, it's other passengers. So, again, if, you, if it's valuable and you wouldn't want to lose it, then just leave it at home. And I hope that answers the question. It's kind of the culture of the whole thing, that it's not, um, it's, it's not fancy. It's very laid back and relaxed. Mary asked, uh, what are the living quarters like, and how long can one take a shower? Oh, perfect. They actually, since they retrofitted the Mandalay, they added hot water tanks. Um, I took long showers, and I would say, okay, a long shower. I was in there at least 10, 15 minutes on the longest one. Maybe it just seems like that long. It never ran out of hot water. In fact, sometimes it was a little hot. And um, the living quarters are varied. If you go to our site, uh, singlestravelintl.com, and you click on the uh, Price and Options tab, you'll not only see the prices, but you'll see some pictures by category. And also on the Photo tab, we have more pictures of the cabins. Or you could also go to Sale Windjammer. So between the two sites, you'll really get a, a, a chance to look at the cabins. In a nutshell, You've probably been on a big ship that had a 150 square foot cabin. It's very small. That's about what these are, if not a little bit smaller. That's at the standard level. And then when you go up to Commodore, Admiral, and King Suite, of course they get a little bit larger. And, uh, and so it depends on what category you take. As far as a sailor goes, if you sail, if you've sailed before, then compared to that, these are spacious. These have a lot more room on them than a normal sail ship. So expect to be a little snug. 
And, uh, you know, don't bring a lot. That's another reason why not bringing a lot works and has evolved to that because there isn't a lot of storage space. There's enough, but you don't have a lot of extra space. So uh, keep that in mind. Don't let it taint your impression. I thought that. That was one of my misperceptions before I went. I wasn't sure how this was going to work for me because I'd never done anything like it before. No, there, you couldn't keep me from the next one. We have another question um, from Kathy. Do you wear a swimsuit under your clothes when on shore so you can be ready to go into the water? Absolutely. Don't leave home without it. And as I said, you dry off in 10 minutes. So don't worry. Just get off, go in, towel off, or just air dry and put your clothes back on. And anyway, when the tender comes back to pick you up, you're at the ship in two minutes. So it's not a big ordeal. You're not going to be sitting in wet bathing suits. Um, Nancy, hi Nance, how are you? <laughs> what about air connection and fare? I think your question is um, maybe how to get down there. Well, I know you're in the South Florida area, so Miami would be your gateway, and uh, you could fly directly into Grenada on nonstop American Airlines, or maybe via Port of Spain, which is what I did. I saved a couple bucks by going through Port of Spain. And if you want some help with that, just give me a call tomorrow, and I'd be happy to give you a quote. Um, Tom wants to know when we find out about cabin mates. Oh, Tom, so you're already signed up. Uh, we might. Well, if you are. Um, when you sign up with STI on any of our vacations, as long as you sign up before the 90-day cutoff period, or then, then we guarantee a roommate for you. Now, we've been taking share reservations even past the 90 days for this cruise because we are filling the boat, and we're confident that we're going to do that. And we, uh, Again, I, I really only have five cabins left, so we are still just taking reservations. Tom, I, I don't know off the top who you're – cabin mate is, but um, I'll look it up when the webinar finishes and I will send you an email if we have one because I think almost everybody's matched up right now. And if you do, I'll in make the introduction. If you haven't signed up right now, by all means, please do it and we'll match you with somebody. Um, I, I think the kind of members that will be joining us on the Mandalay already have a good understanding. I've heard from so many, oh, I've already been on Windjammer before, and I loved it for this and that and the other reason. I think most of you have a sense of what it's like. I probably was the one that really needed to um, get an education. And again, I've, I've sailed on every single major cruise line. I've traveled the world, and, and this Mandalay vacation goes right up there in my top three. When I asked my top 40 frequent travelers where their number one place was in the world, and it didn't even have to be an STI trip, what keeps coming up is the trip to Crete. Um, if any of you who are listening have been to Crete um, or have thought about it or have had conversations with me, you'll know that that, that place was magical. And what made it magical was the family. They made us feel like we were part of their life, a part of their everyday, a part of their culture. They treated us like family, and we all left different people. And that's what's going to happen to you here on the Mandalay. So Kath, uh, another question. Do they have a ladder for the upper bunk on the Commodore? Um, no, it's not that high up. And the lower bunk is bigger so that you're able to kind of get up there. It wasn't, it wasn't very high. I'm, I'm trying to think of in my cabin, I used it as a storage because I didn't have a second person, so I had some of my items up there. And I think it was about chest level. For me, I'm five foot five, So um, I can't imagine it will be a problem. If it were, I think they would have ladders. But none of the cabins, I went to every single cabin, and there were not ladders. But there are, there's furniture nearby too. Remember I told you it's kind of small, so you can probably use your lower bunk and then, you know, a, a cabinet or a shelf or something like that. So I hope that answers your question. And uh, that, was, that was great. You guys had really good questions. I'm going to add all of these to the frequently asked questions section of the site. You helped me a lot that way. And um, I see that you're all chatting. I know that a lot of you that are here active are already going, so I'm super excited for you guys. And um, I just can't wait to hear your stories when you come back and, 
and hope you share your pictures with us and with the community. So unless there's any other questions, um, I see one more. Um, how many are booked? Okay, so we're, we're going to have 40 people on this cruise. We will fill. It's going to be filled with 40 people, 40 singles, and that's it, guys. So you are going to be the bells of the ball and um, enjoy every minute of this intimate and super special experience. Have a great evening. I'm in the office um, tomorrow from 9 to 5 Eastern Time. If you have questions, um, if you want to make the reservation, you can go online right now. You know the drill. Just log in, click on the Single Sailing Adventure, click on Book Now, and make your selection. And um, I will contact you in the morning to talk about flights and all the other details. So um, I enjoyed telling you about this, and um, I was worried about filling my 45 minutes, but I've gone over right now. So thank you for the extra time. And I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and we'll see you on the high seas.